you find things are things. I was sitting in the plane um, in uh, New York. We'd gone to the runway, and I thought, you know, great, let's get home. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, over the intercom, um, we're in New York, the, there's been a power outage in Boston. Well, I didn't care whether there was a power outage in Boston. I was in New York. But because there was a power outage in Boston, we sat on the runway for two hours. Just sat there. Now, the thing is, on air traffic control, that there was a center in Boston that was controlling all the planes up in the sky, uh, and we couldn't take off. So for two hours, we were delayed. Now, I could have got very upset about it, but you know, one thing affects the other. A Boston outage affected our life. Now, things happen in life. I find people are so out of kilter that they, they get themselves worked up, and, and you just can't be like that. You've got to learn that, hey, my God is in control. Somehow, all things are going to work together for good. I might not figure it out, I might not see it, but in the end, it's going to happen. And it did. I tell you, they bought some nuts round and said, sir, would you like a drink? And I said, I'll make up for lost time. Uh, please. Um, Colossians 2.19 are not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knitted together increases with the increase of God. You know, it's only when you, if you want to grow spiritually, learn how to communicate and fellowship with people and be part of the whole. You won't do it in isolation. You can't. It's when you're knitted together, you develop. That's why this church is different. People come and say, what's different about your church? I loved it over in America. The first question they ask you, what size is your church? And I always come up with the same answer. 120 by 75. <laughs> um, <laughs> you may not understand everything that's happening, but you know that God is leading his church according to his purpose. It just doesn't... You can't always give reasons for what's going on. You don't know. But what you do know is God's in control. And that's a life of faith. My faith is in God, not in circumstances, happenings, people. I know God. Paul talks about members which seem to be more feeble, that they are necessary. Things are not always what they seem. And, and you know, people despise um, other people. They, they think, well, you know, this, this person. But everyone has their function. And it's deadly when you think, you know, well, I'd love to be a preacher. Would you really? There's a tremendous cost in going and being a preacher. There's a tremendous cost in, in taking the contradiction of sinners. There's a tremendous price to pay. Not that it is a price to pay, because it's what God called me to do. And, you know, uh, I don't feel it. But I'll tell you what, if you weren't called to it, uh, you would find it difficult. Um, I have to stand up to people... Um, and uh, make stands that, you know, really most people wouldn't dare do. I don't care. But in the end, you've just got to be faithful to God. And, and I, I think the, the kind of selfish ambition keeps coming back to my mind. Hey, that's the biggest problem with society. 
Do you know when you're in a church and God prospers you, what, what is the thing you're there to do? To bless the work of God. Not to enrich yourself. But most people would enrich themselves before they think of God. And they live. I find young people live right up to their income. Look, if you've got a good income, pay off your debts, get rid of your mortgage, use the money to, to bless the work of God. Don't just live high. Because there'll come a day when you won't earn that kind of money. And you'll regret how you wasted your opportunities. Uh, I hear of people that have got four or five hundred pounds a month to spare, so they go out to shows, they go out, you know, eating, they go out there, and actually, they haven't got children yet. Now, when you get children, or grandchildren, you find they're very expensive. They can manage to grow and wear out shoes, they trousers become short for the boys and uh, the girls blossom and, and you suddenly find that what was uh, you know abundance you didn't lay up for it in the bountiful years and then when you're a parent suddenly you realize you've got a heavy mortgage and you've got all these other expenses because you weren't smart and youth always thinks it'll go on now there's coming a time when people who are in debt, especially with credit cards, are going to get really hit. Uh, because you've got to pay it off sometime. And the trouble is, you know, EMI, the great record company, they've just laid off 2,000 people. Um, all over the record industry, music industry, they're laying people off. Uh, suddenly, people who had secure jobs have got nothing. But a smart man doesn't get himself up to his eyeballs in debt, doesn't live to the step, he, he, he's smart. And so when things get a little scarce, he's made provision for it. And, and that's the way of life. It's common sense. But it's not common. And when you're in the body of Christ, when one member profits, Hey, it should bless the whole of the body of Christ. It, it usually happens that it blesses his family. God bless me and mine, us four no more. And, and there's a selfish ambition more than a realization, hey, I'm part of the whole. Each one of us, vitally important. In a body you have vital organs such as the heart, the liver, the kidneys. And they're not visible. But if your heart gives out, you will know. But when your lungs are fine and you're breathing fine, you don't feel anything. But when it starts giving pain and there's something wrong, you're in trouble. And there's a lot of parts in the body of Christ which they just function. You, you're not even aware the people are there. But when something goes wrong, uh, it affects the whole. One member suffers, all suffer. Uh, and you've got to understand that we take for granted in our own bodies a lot of things that go on. Uh, and we just take it for granted and assume that it'll always be all right. 